Okay, so welcome to the last session of our four stages reunion uh, and uh, two last talks, uh, Leo Li, um, turning the correlation and magic angle with bilayer graphene using Coulomb screening. Yeah, we have 30 minutes plus 15 minutes for questions. Yeah, please. Great. Uh, so first, first, let me thank uh, all the organizers for this uh, wonderful workshop during such a strange time. And uh, thanks for the invitation. For the next uh, 30 minutes, I will talk uh, a little bit about our recent experiment using Coulomb screening to uh, tune electron correlation in magic angle to stability graphing. So in case I run out of time uh, later on, let me uh, first acknowledge my uh, collaborators. Um, so this work, uh, experimental part, uh, sample fabrication and measurement is done at Brown University by uh, Xiaoxia Liu and Zhi Wang. Um, Xiaoxia has been leading the effort and uh, uh, in the next 30 minutes, I will tell you about the amazing work she has done. And uh, we have benefited from the theoretical insight from our uh, uh, theoretical collaborator, uh, Oscar uh, Buffack. In fact, the, the idea of this uh, experiment came from a conversation we had in January when I visited uh, the Mac lab. It's very funny to think about if the talk were uh, scheduled for April, maybe none of these will happen. Um, so here's the outline of the talk. Uh, because this is the last session and you've heard so, so much about uh, magic angle twisted divider graphene, so I will skip the uh, introduction part. I will spend most of the time telling you about how we integrate magic angle to divider graphing into a double layer structure, and also how we use the structure to uh, study the effect of a uh, Coulomb screening on various different quantum ground states. As you know by now that uh, when you uh, tune, uh, when you, uh, when two monitor graphing are stacked together with a rotational alignment, uh, you see a uh, Moiré super lattice that appears like this. And the periodicity of the superlattice, as well as the band structure, depends on the uh, twist angle near the so-called magic angle around 1.1 degree. A unique flat energy band emerges near the charge neutral point. And um, in this band, kinetic energy is quenched and Coulomb correlation dominates, which leads to a series of uh, uh, interesting quantum phenomena at low temperature. So uh, two of these interesting phenomena are shown here. Uh, this is a uh, uh, longitudinal resistance as a function of a uh, uh, carrier density within the Moiré flat band. And uh, at each integer number of electrons uh, per Moiré cell, you see a insulating phase emerge. Some are stronger than the other ones. And detuning from some of the insulating state, uh, we uh, people observed uh, a superconducting phase that emerged at low temperature. Since the discovery of these phenomena uh, within the uh, Moray flat band, there has been good consensus regarding the uh, origin of the insulating phase. Uh, when the Moray super lattice appears, a, a charge carrier are localized near the AA lattice site. So you can understand the system basically by a, uh, the model of interacting particles uh, in a lattice and Coulomb correlation give rise to a series of uh, uh, correlated insulators. However, there has been a lot of debate over the origin of the uh, superconducting phase. On one hand, um, in the first paper reporting these uh, amazing phenomena uh, of the Moray club, and it's noticed that uh, uh, the superconducting phase and the uh, uh, correlated insulator they coexist in the phase space in a fashion that's very reminiscent of uh, uh, Cooper materials. And this, this has led to suggestion that the uh, superconducting phase may have a unconventional origin, uh, which is to say that Cooper pair and superconductivity arise from a all, electron, all, all electronic me mechanism. Uh, it's dominated, uh, it's stabilized by Coulomb interaction. And a bit later, um, it's discovered that a superconducting phase can also be stabilized in samples without correlated insulator. And this seemed to be indicating that um, the, the nature of the superconducting phase might be uh, conventional. There is a big distinction between these two different scenarios. Uh, for the unconventional case, um, the superconductor is stabilized by Coulomb correlation, whereas in the BCS picture, it has been uh, long been recognized that uh, Coulomb interaction competes against electron phonon coupling. And this means that if we can have direct control on the strength of Coulomb correlation within the Moray flat band, the behavior of the superconductor will shed light on the nature of the pairing mechanism. 
So um, in this talk, we want to show you that um, we uh, we can tune uh, Coulomb interaction in using a structure shown here, and then study the effect of a uh, uh, tuning Coulomb interaction uh, on various different quantum ground state in twisted bilayer. And um, so this is achieved by using this uh, uh, hybrid double layer structure where we uh, separate a banal bilayer graphing and the magic angle twisted bilayer graphing using a very thin insulating barrier that's about uh, three nanometer thick. Um, so it's thick enough to fully suppress tunneling. We don't have to worry about a charge carrier uh, tunnel across the barrier. It's thin enough to allow strong Coulomb coupling across the barrier to uh, potentially modify Coulomb traction within the more a flat band. There are two key features of this hybrid double layer uh, structure that makes this experiment possible. First, we have independent electrical contact on each active layer, which means uh, there's a, a graphite uh, top and bottom gate electrode, and also uh, the banal and twisted bilayer graphing. You can see that we can independently control three voltage bias that give us independent control on three different uh, experimental parameters the density in the banal bilayer graphene, the density in the twisted bilayer graphene, and also the perpendicular displacement field. And I should stress that it's important that we're using banal bilayer graphene as the screening layer, because uh, in the presence of, of a, a perpendicular electric field, uh, it will induce a energy gap near the charging for point of the bilayer. As such, we can tune the bilayer graphene electrostatically from fully insulating, uh, like this to high density or to uh, metallic at high density. And this allow us a uh, control, a wide range of in-situ control on Coulomb screening. And how that affects Coulomb interaction within twisted bilayer graphene can be understood within uh, using a very simple schematic, right? If we uh, tune bilayer graphene to be insulating, um, the screening from the bilayer graphene's minimum, you can uh, think of it as a part of the dielectric uh, environment. And uh, in this situation, we can study the um, we can study the uh, uh, quantum ground state stabilized by the intrinsic Coulomb correlation within the Moray flatband. And if we tune the carrier density in the bilayer graphene, turning to be uh, metallic at high density, then the electric field in the twisted bilayer graphene now is modified by the changes in the boundary condition. In the ideal case, if you think of bilayer graphene as highly conductive and infinitely large. Right, the solution to the boundary condition can be modeled by uh, image charges uh, that's shown here. That's uh, two times the distance away from twisted bilayer graphing. Um, without the image charge, the, the two electrons experience a uh, unaddressed uh, Coulomb interaction. And as you can see, when you add the image charge, the Coulomb repulsion becomes weaker because now you have the Coulomb attraction between the uh, image charge and the, uh, and the electron. And uh, from this schematic, you can see that you really want this metallic layer to be very close to the uh, twisted bilayer graphene because that will increase the effect of Coulomb screening. And so uh, this hand weave model can kind of show the effect of screening from a nearby metallic layer. It reduces Coulomb correlation with, uh, within twisted bilayer graphene. So before getting into data, let me just quickly talk about uh, sample fabrication. We use the uh, cut and stack uh, technique to uh, to create a twisted bilayer graphene layer. Uh, this is a image used uh, from Saito et al.'s uh, Nature Physics paper, although the original idea is from this reference. We use the AFN tip to cut the graphene into two halves and then pick pick them up uh, one by one so that this uh, reduces the strain that's built into the twisted bilayer graphene when you uh, tear the uh, graphene layer. Um, here are two, the uh, uh, optical image of the uh, stack itself on the left-hand side. You can see the uh, banal bilayer in the vertical direction and then two layer of graphene twisted by one point, about one degree here. Um, and the, the, I should say that the fabrication technique for uh, a double layer structure has been uh, used for quite a long time in the uh, past research, uh, looking for x condensate and also two component fraction from the effects. I will just give you two rep most recent references. And then if you're interested, you can look into literature or ask me questions later on. Um, I don't want to waste your time uh, on these details. Um, the device, the final device looked like this. 
uh, both the twisted bilayer graphene and the banal bilayer graphene are uh, patterned into a whole bar geometry. So we can uh, measure both longitudinal and trans uh, transverse uh, resistance uh, while tuning all these parameters. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, transport characterization of different layer of this device. First, the transport response of a uh, banal bilayer is shown here. This is a map of a longitudinal resistance as we tune a uh, uh, voltage bias on the top graphite electrode and also the interlayer uh, uh, voltage bias. And you can see that uh, we, we, there's this uh, direct point along the diagonal direction. Um, along this direction, we're changing uh, the amplitude of the dispersion field. At large D field, the uh, charge neutral point become very resistive. In fact, it's more clear if we take a few line cuts uh, in this map and plot the uh, two terminal conductance of bilayer graphene, you can see that uh, at D equals zero, uh, that's zero interlayer bias, bilayer graphene is semi-metallic. There's no uh, band gap like this. And as we tune to high interlayer bias, uh, there's a very strong uh, band gap showing up. It's actually, uh, the gap is too large for us to measure up to tens of Kelvin. Um, so when we place the, uh, the, the device under a large interlayer bias, we have the control on bilayer graphene to tune it uh, from fully insulating to uh, highly conductive. And this is how we uh, control screening by simply tuning the charge carrier density in bilayer graphene. And then we can characterize the uh, behavior of uh, twisted bilayer graphene. Um, we will uh, set the interlayer bias uh, V int at large value so that the bilayer graphene has a large band gap. And uh, we measure longitudinal resistance in twisted bilayer graphene as a function of uh, top and bottom uh, gate voltage. As you can see here, uh, the boundary of the uh, Moray band gap are, are shown um, as the insulating phase on the left and on the right. And at several integer filling fraction, a insulating phase shows up at negative two, one, two, and three. And uh, detuning slightly from negative two, there is a very robust superconducting phase uh, showing up as zero resistance. Um, so as you can see roughly from this map that the density in twisted bilayer graphene is mostly controlled by the bottom gate voltage and the density in bilayer graphene, but not bilayer, is roughly controlled by the top gate voltage. And within the, uh, the white dash line, bilayer graphene becomes insulating, fully insulating, and uh, twisted bilayer graphene now in this region experience both uh, V-bottom and V-top. That's why there is a distortion in, the, in all these features. So this map can be Following this, this map can be divided into two regimes. Um, within the white dash line, the uh, twisted uh, bilayer graphene is fully insulating, so there's minimum screening. And outside the white dash line, uh, bilayer graphene is metallic. And by comparing the response of the twist, twisted bilayer graphene inside and outside the white dash line, that will allow us to uh, study the effect of uh, Coulomb screening. And just from this map, it's already telling us that uh, both the correlated insulator and also the superconductor remain very robust uh, in the presence of a uh, Coulomb screening. You can see that we can tune bilayer up to very high density and they basically remain, uh, they are there. So what we're looking for probably is not, it's, it's, a, it's a subtle effect. Right, so uh, for the rest of the talk, I, we will quantitatively study the effect of Coulomb screening by comparing transport behavior uh, basically inside the white dash line and outside the white dash line. And we will start from uh, when the bilayer graphene is fully insulating, basically in this region, and study what's the behavior of twisted bilayer graphene in this device when we don't have Coulomb screening. When bilayer graphene is fully insulating, shown here, um, the uh, longitudinal resistance versus filling fraction is plotted here that shows at different temperature, right? Uh, for the superconducting phase, the resistance as a function of temperature is shown here. Superconductivity is suppressed when we measure at uh, 0.1 Tesla. So the comparison between these two curves kind of show you where the superconductivity onset at about, it's about three Kelvin. And if you use the uh, convention that everybody has been using, uh, where the 50% of normal state resistance defined as PC, right? That's about 2.2 Kelvin, which is very consistent with previous 
uh, observation in samples with similar twist angle. And twist angle here is 1.06 degree. And the temperature dependence of the four terminal conductance measure at nu equals plus two is shown here. Um, the slope of this Arrhenius plot give us a measure of uh, the energy gap associated with the correlated insulating state. You can see that here, the, the energy gap is 25 Kelvin, around 25 Kelvin. It's about two to three, a factor of two to three larger than um, previous ob observation. We don't know exactly why this is so much bigger. Um, we can only speculate that maybe uh, within such a well-protected environment, there's a banal bilayer and graphite on both sides of the sample, maybe charge impurity is uh, extraordinarily low in the sample so that the, uh, in the insulating state, the entire sample turns insulating. Um, but this is, this is very much an open question that we don't uh, know exactly why. So now we can uh, start to look at the uh, influence of changing carrier density in bilayer graphing on the insulating state. Um, you can see that uh, it has a very clear effect on the activated behavior within the correlated insulator. For new equals negative two, the slope of the Arrhenius plots, uh, which correspond to the energy gap of this correlated insulator becomes smaller as we increase the carrier density in bilayer graphing. If we plot the energy gap as a function of a uh, uh, bilayer graphing density, you can see that um, there is a, a when bilayer graphing is insulating, there is a maximum uh, in the energy gap, and then it decreases when we increase the density. And there is a minimum that appears near the band edge of the bilayer graphing. This is likely due to the large density of state near the Van Hoff singularity uh, of the bilayer graphing. This uh, provides further confirmation that we're looking at the effect of tuning Coulomb screening uh, on the uh, stability of the correlated insulator. So let me quickly sum up what we have seen so far, uh, or how we understand we have seen so far. We know that correlated insulators are stabilized by Coulomb correlation within the Moray flat band, and we know that they become weaker in the presence of a strong Coulomb screening from the banal bilayer graphing, so that we can draw the conclusion that uh, Coulomb screening indeed weakens the electron correlation within the Moray flat band. And this gives us a good starting point to maybe look into what is the effect of tuning coulomb uh, screening on the superconducting phase, right? And the way we do this is by comparing the behavior of the superconducting phase uh, within the white dashed line compared to outside the white dashed line where the bilayer graph is insulating compared to metallic. So first of all, how do we characterize the uh, robustness of uh, uh, a superconducting phase, a 2D superconducting phase within twisted bilayer graphing? Um, here I'm plotting uh, resistance as a function of uh, uh, density in twisted bilayer graphing. There is a pocket, there is a region of a superconducting phase you can see here where the resistance basically dropped to zero within the uh, noise band. And we can define the size of the pocket by the resistance that rise above the uh, noise band and naively a stronger superconducting phase will correspond to a larger density range. And um, the DC bias dependence show a sharp peak in the uh, differential resistance. And so at this DC bias, uh, the superconducting phase crosses over to a normal state behavior. And this defines the critical current that reflects the strength or the energy gap of the, uh, the or the strength of Cooper pair within the superconducting phase. There's the uh, magnetic field dependence that give us some measure of critical B field, um, where the uh, superconductivity the, or the zero resistance stop uh, disappear at about this magnetic field. And then finally, there's temperature dependence, which defines the transition temperature TC. Uh, this is defined by the 50% of normal state resistance. So all of these measurements I'm showing right now are performed when bilayer graphing is uh, tuned to be insulating. And you can see that as we tune bilayer graphing to be uh, metallic, the superconductivity becomes stronger according to all of these characterizations. Um, it has a larger side density range that it's stable and the critical current goes up, the, it's stable against a higher magnetic field and the uh, transition temperature goes up as well. Um, 
while we look like tuning carrier density in uh, banal bilayer graphene has an uh, unambiguous effect on the robustness of uh, uh, superconductivity in twisted bilayer graphene, we should note that um, superconductivity or 2D superconductivity is quite sensitive to a lot of the external influence, and especially when you have a nearby metallic layer. So in order to show that this effect is due to uh, tuning Coulomb screening and Coulomb interaction, we need to rule out the other mechanism first. So to do that, let's first take a closer look at the temperature dependence of the resistance. Um, as I mentioned before, when you compare the zero fuel measurement and 0.1 Tesla where screen activity is suppressed, the bifurcation uh, indicates the onset of uh, maybe Cooper pairing. So above this temperature, this is the normal state resistance. And using the 50% of normal state resistance, uh, we get a, a definition of a kind of a mean fuel TC. So in this range, this is the mean fuel transition. And because this is a 2D superconductor, phase fluctuation plays a important role and the nature of the transition should be BKT type or there should be a BKT type transition. And we use the helping nelson uh, equation to fit the temperature dependence below the mean fuel transition this gives us a uh, characterization of the nature of the BKT transition and the BKT temperature is around here. So we can see that there are a few different temperature regimes, right? There's normal state and then this is uh, the, maybe the mean field transition regime and this at very low temperature, maybe phase fluctuation dominates. And then if we compare the, if we look at the effect of tuning uh, carrier density in bilayer graphing, you can see that um, Tuning carrier density in bilayer graphene has almost no effect in the normal state resistance. What this tells us is that uh, what, while there is a clear effect on the TC, what this tells us is that the change in TC when we tune carrier density in bilayer graphene is not because that we're changing the impurity screening from the nearby metallic layer. So we can rule that out uh, using this uh, simple measurement. And then, um, the role of phase fluctuation, uh, since phase fluctuation plays a big role in 2D superconductivity, it has been realized that the behavior of superconductivity can be influenced by a nearby metal layer, simply by suppressing the phase fluctuation in the 2D superconductor. This is demonstrated by the previous work shown here, where they use a, a granular film of lead covered with a thin film of silver. As they increase the thickness of silver, as the th uh, silver becomes a uh, thicker and more conductive. It's very clear that the, uh, the phase fluctuation that happens at low temperature gets suppressed that goes from the triangle to square to star. However, the mean field transition temperature is a constant because that the suppressing phase fluctuation does not have any uh, influence, significant influence on the cook pairing itself. So we can compare this with, uh, with our measurements, right? Um, here we are, uh, the blue line is when bilayer graphene is uh, insulating and then uh, the red line is bilayer graphene is highly conducted. We're using the helping nelson equation again to fit the low temperature behavior. It tells us that the, uh, the phase fluctuation behavior is more or less following the change in the uh, mean field TC. It's not something like that where we're, we're not changing the, we're not, uh, the change here is not dominated by uh, phase fluctuation in the low temperature region. In fact, that uh, the, this structure, the hybrid, uh, the bilayer, twisted bilayer structure, allow us to maybe look at the uh, effect of phase fluctuation um, at displacement flow equal zero when bilayer graphing is semi-metallic, as shown here. Uh, bilayer graphing here is always compressible, which means that the effect of screening is always the same. It's, it doesn't depend on the uh, density in bilayer graphene. However, the suppression of phase fluctuation depends on the conductivity of bilayer graphene. Here, it varies by a factor of 20, a little more than 20, actually. So if we measure the uh, behavior of superconductivity here at the direct point and at high density that's shown here, right? you can see that the mean field TC really doesn't change, whereas we see a little change in the phase fluctuation region. So this is what we expect when uh, we are tuning, we are suppressing the phase fluctuation and changing the BKT temperature. And as you can see, we can tune it over a large range and TC really is insensitive to tuning the uh, density in bilayer graph. 
And this compared to when bilayer graphene is insulating. Uh, so here, when we compare uh, the insulating and metallic behavior, uh, we're really changing the mean field TC, whereas the uh, phase fluctuation regime is not really, there's no significant change there. So, um, right. And this rule out, hopefully, uh, the role of phase fluctuation. And then um, the role of uh, RF filtering, this, uh, unfortunately, we found out the hard way. Um, we realized no, that. Just one second, five minutes. Okay. Oh, great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We'll be on time. So when you when you put a, a banal bilayer graphene that's only three nanometer away from twisted bilayer graphene, they have a very large capacitance coupling. And when you have two lines going up in room temperature and in the environment of external RF radiation, there are some very strange uh, coupling between the uh, some kind of RF resonance. And you can see that by uh, this data that shows uh, uh, resistance versus T measurements, uh, both. Uh, when bilayer graphene is insulating and when bilayer graphene is uh, highly conductive, comparing filtered data and unfiltered data. When bilayer graphene is insulating, um, there's no change in the uh, normal state resistance with or without filtering. Even the mean fuel temperature, uh, there's almost no change, but at low temperature, uh, there's a significant increase in resistance in the unfiltered case. And when bilayer graphene is highly metallic, you, you see that the influence now is a lot bigger. There's almost no change in normal state resistance, but there's a very significant su uh, suppression in TC and the low temperature, the resistance increases further. So you can argue that this is due to uh, some kind of RF uh, resonance. You can argue that um, the uh, without filtering, that electron temperature maybe is elevated. That gives you a bias uh, that seems to suppress the TC or the, yeah, it seems to suppress TC more when bilayer graphene is uh, metallic, or maybe this is uh, because some kind of coupling that's increased in the phase fluctuation because the bilayer graphene, it's, we don't have any way to tell. But we do note that with filtering, the fact that we see a higher TC when bilayer graphene is metallic, that means the filtering scheme we have is sufficient to eliminate the effect of uh, RF uh, radiation in the external environment, right? So I think that leaves us the only one mechanism that uh, when we're tuning the carrier density in bilayer graphene, we really are changing the uh, uh, Coulomb screening. And um, here I show the uh, three different parameters, critical uh, current, TC, and the size of the uh, superconducting dome or the superconducting pocket. As a function of uh, charge carrier density in bilayer graphene, you can see that um, when bilayer graphene is metallic or when Coulomb screening is stronger, uh, superconductivity is uh, more robust compared to when Coulomb screening is uh, minimized by tuning bilayer graphene to be insulating. So uh, lastly, I will just quickly mention one thing. Uh, there has been a few discussion about the uh, origin of the T-linear behavior at high T. Um, it's either uh, electron phonon uh, coupling or it's some kind of a spin fluctuation. But um, either way, uh, our measurement doesn't provide more identification in this regard, but we could show that uh, when we're tuning uh, Coulomb screening from bilayer graphene, this uh, T-linear behavior seems to remain constant within the error bar of our measurement. So it provides some constraint to understanding the origin of this behavior and its potential correlation to um, the, the low temperature superconducting phase. So with that, I'll just summarize that we explored the effect of Coulomb screening on different ground state in magic angle twisted bilayer graphene using a double layer structure. What we found is that uh, the correlated insulator state become weaker with increasing Coulomb screening, which uh, makes sense. And then the superconductivity becomes stronger with increasing Coulomb screening. Maybe that points to the fact that, uh, maybe that points to uh, a electron phonon coupling mechanism, but uh, I put a question mark here because we are only starting to learn the effect of Coulomb screening or how that works. And also, what is the, if there's a uncom potential unconventional superconducting phase, how would that respond to a, uh, to uh, external Coulomb screening? That's, that's, that's what this uh, question mark is about. And um, yeah, thank you all for your uh, attention. And uh, with that, I'll take questions. Thank you very much. Thanks for a wonderful talk.
Thanks. Uh, there are several questions, and let me first read uh, one question from the chat. A person cannot ask because of poor internet connection. So let me go up and do it. Yes. So my question is, this was the question. Since the interlayer separation is very small, about three nanometers, the two layers are in strong correlation regime. In that case, interlayer Coulomb interaction becomes relevant. So how much the Coulomb drug effect is relevant? If yes, did you separate this effect? Um, that's a great question. Um, we did not measure Coulomb drag yet. And, uh, um, but my understanding, I don't see what's the difference between Coulomb drag and Coulomb screening. Um, doesn't, it's another way of characterizing how strong the, I guess what I'm saying is that interlayer Coulomb correlation and is what uh, makes Coulomb screening possible here. And, uh, okay, so when you compared, when you compared the transport behavior in twisted battery graphene, when battery graphene is insulating a metallic, we don't see a dramatic change in the nature of the ground state. So I think the uh, Coulomb correlation within the moray flat band still dominates. And uh, the effect of having the battery graphene here is really providing Coulomb screening. And there's no interlayer correlated ground state here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rafael Fernandez, uh, if right, you are next. Uh, hi, uh, so a, a quick question. Do you have any estimate of by how much you're changing the, the Coulomb uh, repulsion or by how much you're changing the, uh, the electric constant? Um, so I think the most we can say is that the, uh, the energy gap of the correlated insulator seemed to decrease by um, 20 to 30%. And uh, that might be the most uh, uh, direct measurement we have on how much we're changing the uh, Coulomb screening or Coulomb interaction within the Moray flat band. But if you just estimate from the dielectric constant, uh, do you know how much, by how much we're changing? Um, that might be that might be in the supplementary of our paper, but I don't know that number off the top of my head. Okay, thanks. Okay, Ifrat. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, I didn't quite understand how you separate the effect of uh, uh, the metallic uh, the metallic uh, BLG on uh, suppression of the the RF. Uh, the RF noise from suppression of, oh, sorry, enhancement of TC. So maybe that just because, you know, having the metallic gate, uh, in fact, it looks like it makes the filtering more effective. So, uh, so, so given given the certain given given that you're not changing. The environment. Uh, how can you separate these two effects? Do you mean separate the effect of uh, RF radiation? I'm asking maybe the uh, the the unless you uh, you know make a special efforts to filter the RF, uh, maybe you are not seeing the true equilibrium uh, transition temperature and. Uh, by uh, making this uh, this um, uh, screening gate, you are improving it, and that's the reason that uh, superconductivity looks more robust. Um, I'm not sure that I understand the question, but the, the rationale we have here is that uh, without filtering, superconductivity is suppressed more when bilirubin is metallic. We know that that's the influence of the external radiation. And then after we added uh, filtering, the superconductivity actually become more robust when bilirubin is metallic. So we argue that we don't have, we're not seeing um, artifact from RF, RF radiation. So Leo, I think the question, if I can try to restate it, I think the question is asked is, uh, how do you know that tuning into the metallic state of the bilayer isn't adding an additional filtering effect? Yeah, that's that's exactly my question. Thank you. So you, you have no filter, you have low TC, you add a filter, you improve TC. Is it possible that adding a metallic, you know, turning it into a capacitor is slightly improving the filtering in total? Um, 
I don't, I don't understand what's the mechanism behind this. Well, if you have a metallic gate, it can uh, improve the filtering without doing anything else, right? I mean, I right. don't know. So, um, there's one thing that if you notice that, uh, so without, without the external filtering, what we observe mm -hmm. is the exact opposite, right? When bilayer graphing is metallic, the uh, superconductivity is suppressed a lot. So what you're proposing here is a strange combination of uh, the external filter we have and also tuning bilayer graphing. That seems that seem to, it, it's going to require a very convoluted mechanism okay. for that to be the case. Okay, let's move to the next question. Una and Jane Park is next. So do I understand correctly that uh, uh, when you when your interaction is longer range that uh, is prom promoting the correlated insulator? Um, what do you mean the interaction is longer? Well, lack of screening is making it longer range. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes. Right. So yes. Um, I can phrase it that way, right? So longer range interaction promotes correlated insulator. Okay. Also, yes. screening reduces the magnitude of the interaction, so that's another effect. Yeah, yeah. Both, both, the, the, both the magnitude, but also the range of interaction. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jane Park? So, hi, I just had an experimental question. I was wondering, like, throughout the entire experiment, if you were measuring both the BLG and MATBG layers simultaneously? Um, no, we measured them independently. I see, and both using the current bias? Uh, we like there is like no possible effect of like the, when you measure the charge neutrality of the bio graphing, which is very insulating, there is like no possible heating effect on, on the MATBG since you're measuring si um, not simultaneously? No, we, so uh, when we're measuring twisty bio graphing, we actually don't measure bio graphing. So. I see, okay, so there's like no possible yeah, yeah. effect of heating from the other layer. Okay, thank you. No, I think so. Thanks. Okay, let's see more questions. Actually, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Oh, thank you. So, um, in, in your experiment, I mean, the, 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 the gating geometry is, is quite complex, and meaning you have different, you know, gates. And uh, uh, I, I want to ask if in the in the related dual gated experiment from, I guess, Corey and uh, Andrea, well, it's Jankovic experiment, uh, they also saw like suppression of correlated insulating states and some sort of a change of superconductivity. They assigned it to disorder effects into different layers. Yes. So how can you rule out, or how, how do you rule out this effect in, in your sample? Um. So here is a measurement of twisted bilayer graphing uh, as a function of a bottom gate and interlayer bias. And so this axis is a displacement field. You can see that the, there is very little change in these correlated insulator state when we change displacement field. And on top of that, um, when, when, we, uh, when we do this kind of measurement, right, the, uh, maybe this is a better, when we do this kind of measurement, uh, the interior bias is fixed at a constant value. So within this map, the uh, displacement field across twisted bilayer graphing doesn't change a lot, especially when we are comparing the behavior of superconductivity or quality insulator right across this line. The change to displacement field is very negligible. I just, if I could follow up on that, Simon, I think the question maybe that would be related to the earlier work you referenced is whether the sign of the displacement field has an impact on uh, on the evolution of the correlated insulator or the superconductor. Um, it has a uh, it has a slight dependence. I don't have that in the slide, but um, the TC uh, it does. So with one sign of displacement field, uh, everything seems to be slightly stronger than the other sign. But it's not a big big effect. And also uh, when we are at a large interlayer bias. Within this map, the sign definitely doesn't change. So, uh, so this comes back to my original comment that we're comparing this within a two a very adjacent point in this phase diagram, and this vision field is not supposed to have a, a significant impact. Okay, let's see more 
Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sorry. So, you, you, yeah, I, so sorry, I was a bit confused. The very last slide where you discussed the linear and T behavior, it looked like there was a strong change in the normal state resistance. Uh, and I thought you said that there's no significant change in normal state resistance in the prior measurements. Right. So in this case, we are we are tuning the density within a small range. Tuning density in a small range is enough to induce this large change in TC, whereas the normal state resistance remains the same. And in this measurement, we're actually changing the, you see, we're changing both the space and field and also the uh, density over a very large range. And that seemed to induce a offset in the normal state resistance, um, but the slope remained the same. And yeah. as you can see here, so basically what I'm saying is that if you compare the TC between here and there, there's a big change, whereas normal state doesn't change. But if you go, you actually have to go two times out here to see a large change in the normal state resistance. So these are two decoupled phenomena that um, the, the changes in suppressing or uh, enhancing TC all happen at a very nice. Yeah, yeah, so, so this is nice. And even when you go to the, to the region where you get large change in normal state resistance, the, you're basically in a flat response in terms of how TC is evolving, et cetera? Yes, that's right. Yeah, cool, all right. Okay. More questions. Uh, Leo, have you tried this uh, on devices that are not so strongly magic angle, that are more detuned, where uh, things might be a bit more marginal and a bit a little more sensitive? Yeah. Um, I have that slide, but for some reason it's not showing up here. Let me try. Can you still see it? Yes, we see a slide. Yeah. So uh, we recently have a device that's at one degree, and we see correlated insulator, but no sign of superconductivity whatsoever. And the the the, the effect of tuning uh, Coulomb screening is the same on the correlated insulator. So at least we 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 confirm that in another device. Do you turn on a superconductor? What happens? <laughs> uh, that we don't know. It's one degree, right? So maybe superconductor is just not stable there. No, I mean, what happens in this device when you have a screen or no screen? Um, the the correlated insulator become weaker, but uh, nothing happens with regard to superconductivity. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's a little. Yeah. Okay. Thanks you very much. Thank you. Thank you.